Oh, Lily Bear doesn't know that she's not supposed to chase the chickens and try to eat them. But she also doesn't understand how to get inside that run. Look at her. I tell her no, I yell at her, she just can't help herself. Look at her. Look at that predator instinct. She's a sweetheart of a dog, but man, you throw a squirrel or a bird out there and she's going to try to get it. No ifs, ands, or buts. She's definitely not a herd dog or a livestock dog, whatever kind of farm dog you want to call them. She's a hunter. A hunter that's scared to death of guns and gunshots. She's a liberal hunter. <laughs> and she'll just sit out here and stare at them and stare at them and stare at them. And every once in a while they could jump towards them and they all run away. I wish she knew better. Any ideas on how to train them? Other than just let her be around them for a while? I don't, I don't know. She'll snap at them. If she has a chance, she'll snap at them. So is there any hope and redemption of a dog like this around your birds? Or is it just for the rest of their lives you got to be concerned about her trying to get at them. Look at her. A pointer. <laughs> oh, you knucklehead. Alright, so I'm taking some of y'all's advice. Uh, this is the rock that I couldn't get out with the tractor. And I tried a, a sledgehammer and tried chipping it. And I chipped a little bit off, but the splinters came up and, you know, were just, like, tearing me apart. So I said, you know what, let's shift it back and take some other advice and build a fire around it, see if we can cook it. Make it super hot. And then when it cools off, maybe it'll uh, start to break apart on its own. Or maybe I can use a sledgehammer then and make it easier. I don't know. But at the very least, if this doesn't work, I'm getting rid of some of this really punky, rotten termite infested ant infested wood that's been hanging out here for god knows how many years is going to make room for my new wood that i'll be getting some hardwood that i'll be splitting and getting together for the new fireplace insert i'll have hopefully this fall so we'll see how this works i'll report back to you let you know well gang i'm taking advantage of the cool morning that we got here it's kind of an anomaly for this time of year and uh, we're going to definitely have hotter days here in the next few days. It's going to get up into the 90s and very humid. And as you can see here, I have a fig tree. In fact, I have three fig trees. All nice next to each other. And this one was infested with, you know, that viney growth. It literally took over and was choking this thing to death. In fact, I didn't even know there was a fig tree in there until I took a closer look. I saw little figs coming out. And I'm like, oh, hey, wait a second. It's a fig tree in there, which made sense. They put three right in a row. And so I came in here with the chainsaw and just started trying to be as surgical as I could. Man, I got a lot of stuff out of there. And of course, once I get the chainsaw in my hand, I get a little crazy. So I said, hey, let's come down here and top this magnolia tree that is just, it was big and getting bigger and blocking sunlight to the house. Not really to the house, that big limb is, but more importantly it was blocking sunlight to potential growing area I want to plant some more fruit trees down behind here so I topped this magnolia tree and I also went through and I started cutting out some of the briars that were starting to encroach on that and choke it out what else can I get into I'm sure there's other trouble oh yeah I came over here to these holly bushes that were out of control and just finished trimming them up and top them basically I'll probably make them like a small tree I'll leave them there, but this one looks horrible now, but that's okay. It was 15 feet tall at one point. So I got to get all this brush up out of here. I got that huge brush pile that I still have yet to burn. And that's what I got going. It's already starting to get hot, but it's nice, breezy, crisp, cool day that's about to turn hot. So get back to work. Well, the rest of this stuff on the ground here, I'm going to just chop up, mulch up with the mower. But this tree has some recovering to do, but at least it's got a fighting chance now. It's not being strangled anymore. So I'm going to just have to keep an eye out for those because they'll pop right back up and start strangling the plant again or the tree again or whatever gets its 
nasty thorns around. So just keep an eye on it. And um, yeah, a little more light getting through here and hopefully a healthier fig tree. And of course we got the magnolia tree that's been topped and I took all the brush out of there. We got our fire going over here with the help of a little used motor oil that I'm just putting on there to get the flames really hot and burn up. And there's the brush pile, the ever-growing brush pile. I tried burning it, but it was still too wet. I just let it sit, dry out, and then poof, do its thing. I'm not exactly sure how long to let this go or what, what you have to do with it. And guys, I'm out of internet here. I haven't had internet for several days. So if you're seeing this video now, it's because I do have internet. But the last four days, I haven't had internet. And that's a whole story I'll tell you about sometime, maybe on a live stream or whatever. What a nightmare. You're seeing this video probably way later because I got a bunch stacked up ready to be uploaded. But I wonder if I throw water on it after the fact and get the temperature change and that, that's what makes it crack or if just the heat from the fire makes it crack. I don't know. If I had internet, I'd look it up, but I don't. So it's all going to be an experiment. We'll see how it goes. My garden is getting huge. Look. No chemtrails. Beautiful sunny day. Man, I don't know what it's going to take for these things to start ripening up. But I put some lie down around them to stop the blossom rot, I guess it's called. That's what somebody told me to do. I think it was Jeffrey that told me to do that, so thanks, Jeff. And it seemed, it seemed to work. But I still don't see anything getting red. They're getting big. It might just take a couple of days. You know, all of a sudden, boom, they'll start ripening right up on us. The berry production is still out of control. We're getting a gallon a day. And by the way, guys, um, those were gallon bags, and somebody actually made that comment. Wow, it looks big uh, to be a quart. Well, you were right. It was a gallon bag. I don't know if I said that before, but uh, we've been getting some zucchini out of here. I think there's another one ready to go. And my wife made a re really good zucchini concoction. Now it's still a little small. Um, I think we've taken four or five zucchini. We've had a little bit of a stink bug infestation on the squash. So we had to come in with soapy water and we've sprayed it. We've had that before in the past in our little suburban garden. But look at the leaves. They're all starting to turn like a weird brown. We had eggs on here that we had to cut out. Oh, there's a ladybug. Good. I know ladybugs kill other bugs that we don't want. So we want ladybugs. But unfortunately, these squash plants, which were really taken off, have kind of stopped. So we've sprayed all the stink bugs that we can find, all the babies, all the adults. We saw some mating adults that we sprayed and killed them. And that soapy water kills them in a matter of seconds. It suffocates them. And then all the eggs that we found, we tried to scrape off. We sprayed with soapy water. We took leaves off if we couldn't get the, we couldn't get the um, eggs off. And that, of course, when you start doing that, taking leaves off, it invites disease. So maybe that's what we have going on here. I don't know. There's plenty of blossoms. There's still some small squash starting to come in. I don't know if this is something I have to be worried about or if there's anything I can do about it anyway. I don't know. we we'll just wait and see, I guess. We're doing what we can, not knowing really much about what we're doing. Uh, all those tomato plants that I transplanted are still looking pretty good. I'm going to have to do something about caging them or something. Let's take a quick look at them. I mean, look at these things. They look great. I pruned them. Took off the suckers. And they look pretty dang good. As they grow a little bigger, I'll probably prune them even more from, from the bottom up. I'll we'll get a, you know, 6 to 12 inches of pruning in there. So they all look good. So far, it looks like they're all going to make it. Let's take a look at the ones down in the first row that I moved around or even left when I thinned this out and moved them all. They all look pretty good. But I'm definitely going to have to develop a better system, not just in the planting phase. we got to do a better job planting and spacing. Um, didn't do an ideal job. But in this case, these were all volunteers, so it is what it is. They were here. We didn't 
plan them. We didn't plant them. They just came up. But even the ones that we did plant, we put too close together, I think. But we're going to have to do a better job of figuring out how we're going to cage them, space them, stake them, whatever. Trellis them, maybe. I don't know. But that's next year. We got all year to figure that out, and this was an experimental learning year. Every year is going to be a learning year, guys, no doubt about it. Uh, I would imagine that we're going to continue to learn how to garden over time, and that's good. I'm excited about that. And each year I hope we get better and better. Each year I hope the soil gets better and better. And uh, I'm still trying to get wood chips. I can't seem to get any. I'm calling around. I'm signing up on apps. I'm talking to people that do this for a living. It's just we're kind of out of the way, so they don't get a whole lot of work out here. I'm just it, That's all it takes is one job, really. One job will get enough wood chips, get us in business. So eventually it'll pay off, I hope. But we are going to have plenty of material. We're going to have plenty of leaves and whatnot to put down. So we should be fine. And the beehive. I think today we're going to get it in the beehive. And I'm going to just take a look at the honey super and see how things are. I only put five frames in when I installed that super. Because I didn't want to give them too much to have to deal with. And I don't know if that made a difference or not. Having less frames, whether, whether I had ten or whether I just had five in the open a box. I don't know which is better. So again, experimentation, we'll see. But hopefully things look good in there and I could add the other five frames because it's been, I think, four or five weeks now. And of course I got this thorny holly brush that I have to clean up that I just hacked down. And this stuff hurts, guys. You got to have gloves, you got to have long pants on, which I have today, and a long shirt. And we'll get that cleaned up. And then I'm not sure what I'm going to do back here. Is this going to be a place that I put fruit trees? Is this going to be a place? And I got the compost area next to it. And I'm not even sure that I'm going to need all this. So as time goes on, I'll figure out a better use of the space and the resources that I have. Um, I, think, I think the goats that we get are going to go out in that third little pasture there. I'm going to have to fence that in. And guys, I'm going to try to go... El cheapo on this. It's not going to be like the coop. I'm not going to get crazy and spend, you know, a thousand bucks. I'm going to use pallet wood and hopefully salvage scavenge material. And I'm going to build a little area for a couple of goats that I can use for milk. And if worse comes to worse, meat. But the idea with the milk is we're going to make soap out of it. Hopefully soap we can use. Hopefully soap we can sell for some income. We're going to use it to make um, yogurt and maybe even uh, drinking milk right if it's good if we like it so that's the idea there and we're probably going to do it somewhere out here I don't want to get them back there in the orchard and let them have access to that because that could be dangerous to the orchard right so it'll probably be somewhere out in here what are you up to OGK Dirt for the chicks run. <laughs> There's a gap under the fence. Are they Houdinis? Are they escaping? Um, they haven't yet, but they could totally go under there. It's just the sand I had under there is wearing away. Okay, gotcha. All right, get to it. And we're gonna continue to fan the flames over here, and gotta bring the temperature of this rock way up so it'll split. Yeah, well, I threw another load of. A bucket load of nasty, punky, termite infested, yucky wood on there. And she's burning away. Some of y'all suggested using an air chisel, but I don't have an air chisel and I prefer not to buy one for this. Yeah, I might need it for something else at some point in the future. Maybe it's one of those tools you get and you go, oh, I'm glad I have it. I don't know. I don't think I've needed it up to this point. I may not ever need it again. So this seemed like uh, the easiest way to get this done. I hope it works. And I'll report back to you and let you know. I'm going to let this just burn as hot as it can burn. And then I guess I'm going to come back and throw some cold water on it and see if I can get some cracking going on. I just really need to take about the top eight inches off or foot off and then just bury it back with the rest of this dirt here. It'll be right as rain again. Right? Rain country? Homestead? Ha, ha, ha. I don't know if I've shown you this already, but this is one of those trees right next to the house that I hacked down pretty good. Look at those beautiful flowers. I mean, they're gorgeous. Anyone know what those are? Give me a closer look. They don't smell. I don't detect 
any fragrance whatsoever, but man, they're pretty. Very pretty, big cluster of them up there. So this whole limb is gonna be gone here whenever this tree guy gets here. I'm gonna have the main tree stay, and that big limb that's coming out and hanging over the house is gonna be gone. And hopefully that takes away some of the shading for my solar panels, as well as some of the danger of that thing falling on the house. And these trees are gonna be gone now. He called that one tree because they're joined at the base. I call it two, but whatever. So those two slash three trees are gonna be gone. These bushes, I hacked down most of them. And of course, they're already coming back. Nature's pretty amazing, healing itself and growing back. Sorry about the wind, guys. It's a little windy today. They're already coming back. I think I wanna get rid of them for good. And I might plant the eucalyptus right over here and maybe even a honey, uh, maybe even one of those huckleberries that I have still in the pot that Mr. Jeff gave to me. This patch over here, I have some berries growing up against the fence, which I'll probably tame and keep. And I have this pompous grass that I'll probably hack down and get rid of. And the rest of these plants are just beautiful flowers. I'm gonna just try to control them the best that I can and uh, just enjoy them because they're gorgeous. Oh, hey, awesome, awesome, awesome. I just noticed I'm getting a pumpkin, hey. Now, I don't know if you guys follow Life in Farmland, Eric, he's got a great channel, guys, and he's really, he's got special skills when it comes to making videos. He doesn't put out a ton of content. Uh, his videos aren't long and involved most of the time, but the stuff that he does put out, it's really worth checking out, and I, I just enjoy the heck out of it. Just great guy. So check out Eric Life in Farmland, but he is involved with a bunch of other channels. See my little pumpkin starting to grow down there? Yay! He's involved with a bunch of other channels. This is their second year doing the giant pumpkin challenge or whatever they're calling it. I don't know. Oh man, look at these stink bugs. Here, here are the stink bugs that I'm talking about. There's the eggs, the BBs. Oh, get rid of those. I don't know if just by doing this, if I just leave them down there, they're going to hatch out anyway. Uh, stinking things. They just infest these plants. I'm going to come through here with the soap water and spray them. So any any uh, babies or any adults that I might see in here. Oh, there's some babies right there. Look at all those right there. See those? All right, I'm going to go get the spray. Wow, there's a ton of them. All right, they got to die. I'll be there. It's all out war against these suckers. I'll try to get some video for you here so you can see how this water works. Let's see if we can get an angle. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. All right. All right, have fun. I'll see you before you leave. Watch this. You spray them and it suffocates them. Spray the eggs too. They don't last long. They're already dying. Some of them are already dead. All right, I'm gonna take a good look at these plants and see if there's any other eggs or bugs. Oh, look at those eggs right there. I'm gonna spray them. I don't know that spraying them works for the eggs, guys. Let me know if you know. Helping them hatch out on the ground. These things will just decimate your crop, though. They look like little BBs. Some more. It looks like one just hatched. I don't know what the gestation period is for these things. Somebody help me out. Tell me what I got to do to get rid of these things for good. Maybe this is it. It's just a continued continuation. All right, you can see all those are dead right there on top. 
it just took seconds. This one's getting away, not for long. You're gonna suffocate too, bud. Just don't know it. Now, it'd be great, ideal, if I can find some of the adults and just kill them so they stop breeding and laying nasty eggs in here. So I hope my pumpkins grow and these stink bugs die. Now one of y'all said that you thought these were boysenberries instead of blackberries and I think you may be right. I think you may be right. Chime in on that everyone. We know these are definitely raspberries down here and they were friggin going crazy. Pulling a half gallon or more a day off of here. And uh, I'll probably get another half gallon or more today. I'm going to get out here and do that in a little bit. Take a quick look in the greenhouse. And again, I just have two plants growing from Deep South Homestead. And I think, I think these are the tomatoes, which I'm super psyched about. But I really wanted some peppers too, guys. I've been watering it. And we're keeping it in here. It's warm. Maybe it's too warm. I don't know. Chime in on that too. I got June bugs in here, and I got stink bugs in here. Uh, look at these leaves, man. Not good. Is there anything I can do to turn that around, y'all? Oh, I have some. What is that in there? Are those bees? I'll leave them be. Yeah, they're bees. All right, we like the bees. We don't like the stink bugs or the June bugs. Little rascals. Me. Love, love, love. I tried to